right. And attendees are starting to fill the room. Awesome. Welcome, everyone. I'm seeing people stream in. Um, as you come in, please go ahead and add to the Q&A. Um, right? That, I think that'll be the best place to put this. Um, go ahead, add your name, your pronouns, and what your coding superpower is. So take that however you want to. Um, for example, I can spot a bug from a mile away. That's a coding superpower. Or um, I can code entirely on my phone and I, my eyes never get tired. That's another coding superpower. Um, so as we wait for folks to join us, go ahead and um, put the, uh, answer these questions in the chat. Yeah, I've just opened up the chat so that, um, so any of the attendees can feel free to, to chat, um, to send it to hosts and the panelists. So feel free to drop it there. Or if you put it in the Q&A, that's all good too. We'll see it either way. So while we're waiting to get started, um, Feel free to uh, drop names, pronouns, coding superpowers, and um, yeah, we'll get started here in, in, in just a minute. Lena, you want to tell them a little bit about um, creating a free account while they're waiting? Yeah, I'm also going to put, uh, also in the chat, I'm going to put the link to replit.com, which is where I work. And so also while you all are coming into the room, go ahead and create a free account on Replit. We will be using it today. Um, here is it. All right, you can find that in the chat. Welcome, Zechariah. What is your coding superpower? I haven't heard any coding superpowers yet. Oh, Jonathan, yes. <laughs> I wish I had one, so that's why I'm here. Oh my goodness. I I think you have one. You just may not know what it is just yet. Yeah, hopefully we can figure that out before um, before the end of the session. Um, <laughs> Lena, you want to go ahead and get started or you want me to give it another moment? Awesome. Um, so you've got about 30. Let's do it. Let's get started. All right. Awesome. So um, I, I see some people are dropping their names and, and pronouns and superpowers in the chat. So we'll have a bunch of those. I want to go ahead and get us started here today. My name is Joe Alessi. I am the program director here at the Congressional App Challenge, and I'm excited to welcome everybody um, to today's webinar um, hosted by our friends at Replit. Uh, Replit is a new um, supporter of the program, um, and they're doing absolutely amazing work. Uh, Lena has been our contact there, Lena Sawyer, who's going to be walking you guys through how to use Replit today uh, to code anywhere and to create something awesome. And so um, if you don't already know, about Replit. Uh, Replit is a uh, web-based IDE that works um, on your iPad, tablet, mobile phone, or web browser. And so it makes coding anywhere really easy. And by the end of today, you'll have a really great sense of, of how to use Replit to get started coding and maybe even code something for this year's Congressional App Challenge. And so with that, I will turn this over to Lena, who will be leading today's presentation. Oh. Hi everyone, welcome. Um, so as Joe mentioned, my name is Lena. I um, work with the teacher community at Replit and I also used to teach teens um, how to code as well as do all kinds of other digital stuff um, and make art in museums. And um, today we are gonna talk about how you can use Replit to code anywhere. Now, I bet some of you are like, what the heck is Replit and who is this person? Um, I will tell you all about that right now. So keep them coming in the chat. I love seeing all of these superpowers that you all have brought up, um, coming up with random problems to solve as I code in front of the class, typing as fast as lightning, thinking creatively and grasping things quickly. I love these, I love these, I love these. So keep them coming, I'm seeing them. Um, we are also joined by the amazing Brittany Perkle today. She's my colleague at Replit. Um, and Brittany will be making sure that questions in the Q&A get answered, um, or she'll call those out to me if um, I need to answer them out loud. All right. So feel free to keep asking your questions in the chat or in the Q&A window, and I'm more than happy to answer them as we go. Great. Well, so if you haven't yet, please make sure that you create a free account on Replit. I'm putting that in the chat one more time. 
we are going to be using it today. So as I go, as I chat through these next few slides, you'll have a little bit of time to set that up. So to start, what is Replit? What a weird word, right? Um, Replit is a zero setup collaborative browser-based coding editor, and we have support for over 50 languages. So in the chat, go ahead and tell me what are some of the languages that you're using on your projects? I already see R and Python. What are some other ones that you're using? Swift, okay, C++, Firebase, C Sharp, Flutter. Oh my gosh, so many languages. Okay, so Replit supports 50 plus languages. So if there is some random esoteric language that you wanna be able to build online, well, we'll probably support it as well. Um, we'll dive into that in just a moment. Um, but the base, the basic knowledge you got, you should understand about Replit is that we are a place where you can build coding projects without any setup needed, and you can do it with your friends, and you can do it on any device. So some of you might be tuning in from your phones, from your tablets, from your computers, your laptops, etc. You can use Replit on those devices. So just today, I was on the plane and I was coding on my phone. I was on Replit and I was coding on my phone. So you all can do that too. It's pretty awesome. And the reason why we do that, why we built this product is because our mission is to make programming more accessible. We want more people to be building cool projects and bringing all of their experiences and ideas to our digital world and our digital landscape. And that's why I'm also so excited about participating and collaborating with the Congressional App Challenge because they're also trying to make computer science more accessible. So we're all in this together. We all want to see the amazing things that you built. Okay. So let's keep going. Um, I have all these slides for you. I'm happy to share in the chat if you want to be able to use them outside of here. Let's see if I can grab that link. Yes, awesome. And in this, in these slides, you'll also be able to um, open up links from the slides. So to start, go ahead and log into Replit. And go ahead and give me a smiley face in the chat. Once you're logged in, you've got an account and you're on your Replit homepage. Ooh, Taejun Ying has a big smiley face. We love to see it. Andrew is in disguise the disguised smiley face. I realize that the general audience cannot see this chat, um, but I am loving, the, let me just tell you, there's a variety of emoji smiley faces and I'm loving it. <laughs> Trent just sent an angel face. All right, keep them coming. Once you've logged in, I'm gonna make sure we're at, we have a good amount of folks logged into Replit. Carrie has got a cow, cow person smiley face. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And I'm gonna, I have these slides as tools for you if you need them, but I'm gonna show you live how to use Replit. We're gonna create a project together. Ooh, Jen's got an alien love. <laughs> so here I am on my Replit homepage, and I'm gonna start by clicking this big blue button up here. So go ahead and click on create REPL on the top left. And we're gonna learn what a REPL is. Ooh, Jonathan, that's cool. I've never seen that kind of a smiley face before, Jonathan. All right. Once you've hit create REPL, you can choose what language you would like to use. Now, we have all kinds of languages. I know some of you said C, C++, we've got those. We've got HTML, CSS, JS. We've got Go, Rust, all kinds of stuff. We've even got lol code. Um, really just search through it we've got it um and we also have templates 
So if you want to start with a pre-built um, project, you can do that as well. And I actually am going to do that myself. So I'm going to use a P5 template just because I think they're fun. I'm going to use this P5JS. All right. You can choose whatever language you want. If you're totally lost, you can follow along with me and do P5JS and you'll have something cool to do. Then you'll be prompted to give it a title. We give them silly titles to begin with, like waterlogged composed chapters, but you can give it a better title if you want. I actually kind of like this one. It's beautiful, it's beautifully poetic. Um, so I'm, gonna just, I'm just gonna leave it as is. Then I'm gonna click create raffle, all right? So once we've hit create REPL, you should see your REPL. Now this right here is what we call a REPL, All right? And what a REPL is, is it is an environment where you get to code. Andrew just asked, how do I get to a dark theme? Click on the settings gear and go to theme, light or dark. Pretty cool, huh? Okay. Now, some of you might recognize this. If you've already been coding a bunch, you'll recognize what this IDE is made up of, right? On the left, we have this, um, we have our file tree. So this is where you can add all of your coding files. And as we saw, this project is in P5.js, but I have HTML files, CSS files. I could add more different types of um, language files to this project if I wanted to, okay? So get creative, it's very open-ended. Then you can also add things like assets. So you could add um, images. If you're building a video game, you could add your sprites. Um, you can add PDFs, you name it, all kinds of files. Those will all live in the file tree, okay? Awesome. Then right next to that, we have our text editor. So this is where you write your code. This is an HTML file. So we've got some HTML code in here, pretty basic skeleton. Um, and then next to that, we have our output panes. So because this is a visual language, right? Our output's going to be visual. We have this right here, where if I hit run, I've got my visual output, but I've also got my console and my shell, okay? I love P5 because I think it's like a fun party and I love art. So this is why I chose it. Now let's do, let's just experiment together with this REPL. All right. Let's go into script.js. Okay. And we can go ahead and change some of these colors, right? So go ahead and if you want, change some colors in here. So I might change these to, I don't know, I'm going to make up my own. You can change your own too. If you're working in another language, you can start adding your own code, building your first project. I don't even know if some of these colors exist. Does eggshell blue, is that a color? No, I don't think so. Ivory. Let's see how it looks. Cool. Okay, so now I've got a pastel project. So see how easy that was? And now I can even share this project with you all in the chat. So I grabbed this URL up here and I'm posting it in the chat. And now you all can take a look at my project too. If you just made a beautiful P5.js project that you want to share, go ahead and put it in the chat. I'll open it up and we can take a look. So, Lena, um, Sharia wants to know if they can build iOS apps on Replit. Oh, yeah. So, um, Sharia, are you working in, is it Swift? Is that the language? I'm trying to think. Just tell me in the chat if I am off base with that. Swift. Okay, awesome. So you can just choose Swift as your language. Pretty cool, huh? And then we'll host it from here. Ooh, Carrie, thank you for sharing. All right, so here's Carrie's project. Let's take a look. What did she make? Ooh, I like these colors. Okay, people are feeling the pastels today. All 
Okay, I'm going to give you all another couple of minutes. You can take a look. Uh, share your link to your project if you'd like. So what Carrie shared is this is a spotlight. So what's great about this is that not only can I see Carrie's output, right? I can see the visualization of her code. I can also view her code, see what the exact colors that she chose. Ooh, sky blue, that's the color I was looking for. That's a good one. And then if I really like Carrie's project, I could even fork it and remix it as my own. So this is, I love Replit because people are so creative on here and people are also really, really, really collaborative. So for example, if I go into apps, I can look at really cool projects that people have made and then I can fork them and remix them for myself, right? So I can use them as um, inspiration to then build my own projects based on that. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much, Carrie, for sharing that. I really appreciate it. Okay. All right. So next up, we're going to talk a little bit about collaboration. Okay. So in this one, we have about 40 people. So we'll see how this goes, uh, but we'll give it a shot. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to use an invite link and I'm going to ask you all to join me in this project right here. My congressional app by challenge, congressional app challenge by Replit project. Now, before we get started, I'm going to set some ground rules, okay? First of all, you all are in the presence of some very cool people. I saw we've got some folks with different congressional districts joining us. We've got teachers here. We have CAC um, organizers here. Also, Brittany and myself are here. So please, please, please be respectful of what um, in what you're placing into this project, okay? Be respectful of what other people are putting in here. So don't delete someone else's code, all right? Is everyone clear? All right. Now, Veen, to answer your question, how do you share your game? You're going to click up here in your project details, click on this little kebab, and then go to Spotlight. What that's going to do is it's going to give you this cool link that you can share with us. So go ahead and share that, Naveen. All right. So what I'm going to do is share this invite link with you all. So you can do this as well, by the way, all of you with your REPLs, you can invite people to work with you. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click invite. I'm going to grab this link. I'm going to put it in the chat. Okay. So you all are welcome to join me in here. Oh, I'm seeing some people join. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And before you edit anything, here's what we're doing. From lines 12 through 16, there is a div, so a division of code that you can copy and paste down here below my section, okay? So what I want you to do is copy and paste and go ahead and add your name, the title of your project, and a fun fact about yourself, all right? Awesome, oh my gosh, I'm seeing so many people jump in here. I'm gonna run this code. And we're going to start to see this web page populate. Okay. And I can also see all the folks who are working on it, right? I'm seeing all these moving cursors. Carrie, I see Ishan, I see Jonathan. Yes, awesome. Love it. All right. So I'm going to give you a minute. I'm going to sit back and just watch you work. Good. Tracks the school bus. Awesome. Okay. Hive vibe. Ooh, Andrew, I'm curious about what hive vibe is. Ooh, okay. So we've got some athletes here. Let's see, we've got an athlete. Ooh, Ishan knows how to code in Java. Very cool. That's a great skill. Ooh, 
Andrew does Arduino and robotics. Andrew, remind me to share um, a link with you because we do have some Arduino capabilities on Replit. You should definitely use it for that. Uh, Divya, community connections, draw and dance. Who says that people who code are just math nerds or science nerds? That is such a lie. We're also art nerds, sports nerds, um, cooking nerds, reading nerds. <laughs> We're all kinds of nerds. Love it. <laughs> um, Aditya asks, does it support React Native? Well, why don't we take a look while folks add their own? I am sorry, I can't memorize all the languages we support on Replit, but it's easy enough to check. All right, so we've got React, TypeScript, and React.js. Um, I will say we also recently added something called Nix, which is like the ultimate package manager. Um, and what Nix allows you to do is import languages that might not be listed in here, but you can import them yourself. Okay. All right. I'm going to run this code. Let's see how we're looking. Robotics, athletes, ooh, Ida or Ida does color guard. I'm so jealous. I always wanted to be able to do color guard. That is so cool. All right, Johan loves coding. This is awesome. Jen, same. As I mentioned, I used to teach art, art history, history and coding. So CS is, we can do anything with CS. Jen, awesome. Cool. All right. So I am loving this. Now, I know you all are on different levels of um, coding skills, right? I know some of you might be at the beginning of your journey, some of you might be in the middle. Um, and so I don't want to go too in depth with any specific coding skills, but I will give you a couple more fun things that we can do together, all right? So let's make sure, all right, I'll work with Divya's. Divya, we're gonna make sure Divya has a div class at the top, a div class and a closing tag, div tag at the bottom of their section, okay? So everyone, make sure you've got your opening div tag and your closing div tag. Now, give me, give me a guess. What is the difference between an opening tag and a closing tag in HTML? Tags, by the way, are between the, the brackets, the two pack people. <laughs> oh, Andrew. <laughs> what do you think is the difference? All right, I'm seeing some thoughts, some observations in the chat. Yes. All right. Carrie and Aditya, you got it. So the difference between a starting tag and a closing tag is this forward slash. Find it on your keyboard. It is right there. All right. All right. So just like with a, any good sandwich, we need to make sure that our starting tags and our closing tags always match and that our closing tags have this forward slash, okay? So again, this is like our, our bun and the gen part is like the meat or the veggie burger or something like that, right? So what I'm gonna have you do next is I'm gonna have you add in div class equals intro. I want you to change this to another name. So you could name it your name, you could name it, yeah, name it your name. Let's do that. Although there are two gens, I will warn you. So maybe not gen. <laughs> awesome. That's great. Awesome. 
So Naveen, I'm just gonna make sure, you're gonna wanna make sure you have a closing div tag. All right, and while folks start to change their class name, we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna answer the question in the Q&A. So Carrie says, I was wondering for making an app in the Congressional App Challenge, can you code a program on an IDE? Does it have to work on a device like a real app? Oh, Carrie, that is a good question for Joe. Joe, do you mind taking that one? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you certainly can code for the app challenge using an IDE. It does not need to be a mobile app. It could be a web app. It could be um, something for robotics. It can be anything. So as long as it uses code in some capacity and it's something that you developed yourself, uh, it is eligible to be submitted to the Congressional App Challenge. Cool. And Replit, as you can see, we also, not only are you building it on IDE, IDE, we're also hosting your projects. So you can share it on a resume, on a CV, in your portfolio, um, just like we saw with Carrie's um, project, right? She just shared her link with us and we were able to view it. So it can really work. Um, wait, Carrie, you're also not asking the question, um, but the we host it. So again, feel free to use the link, whether it's your spotlight link or it's this URL up here. This can be what you share with judges or with um, whoever, like if you ever apply for a job, you can share it with them in that way as well. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Good job, everyone. I saw Jen. You saw my thread. Thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and close it. So you can also annotate things in here, which I love. Like I can add chats to lines of code just by selecting it and starting a thread. Okay. It's pretty easy. Now, once you've changed your div class, we're going to go into our CSS, right? So we've already learned in HTML. Things that start, things that have these brackets on them, those are tags. And a start tag and an end tag have one thing different about them, which is that forward slash. Okay. And these tags kind of dictate how things look, right? So in this case, we have H2 is a second largest header, right? And then we have our H1 here which is our largest header. So you can probably guess H3 is gonna be the third largest header and on and on and on. What does a P tag do then? What might the P stand for? Go ahead and put your guesses in the chat. Or maybe you already know, I bet a bunch of you already know. Yes, oh my gosh, okay, chat's blowing up. Whoa, um, paragraph, P stands for paragraph. So it's, it's in a language that a lot of us are familiar with, English, it's based on it. And so H1 is the first largest heading, P is a paragraph, right? So then div is a division of code, which is why we're seeing boxes around some of these. So I'm just gonna go through here and I'm gonna make sure we don't have any bugs before we get to our next part. So awesome, Carrie, you've got your starting closing div, starting closing, nice, nice, nice. Good, awesome, awesome. Okay, let's see. Johan, I think we have a div that is unclosed somewhere. Tell me if you catch the bug that's causing, oh wait. Okay, okay great. So those of you who changed the name, we're gonna give these cool things to you. So go ahead and jump into style.css with me. And what you're gonna see is that there is, CSS is a different language than HTML. So it's just slightly different, but they still talk to each other, okay? So in CSS, we don't have these um, angle brackets anymore. We do have squiggly brackets, right? And what we do in CSS is that we tell CSS what section we want different styles to apply to. So 
HTML is the skeleton of our project. CSS is the hair, the makeup, the outfit, et cetera. It's the flair, if you will. And in this case, I'm telling all of these things, background color navy, font color white, and font family to apply to the body section. Now, the body section is all of our web page. It's all, all of it. So then intro is one little div. So I gave mine a class name of intro. And if Carrie gave her section a class name of Carrie, Carrie, what do you think you're going to write as your CSS selector? What do you think it might be? If mine was dot intro, what might yours be? Dot Carrie, exactly. So Carrie, go ahead and add dot Carrie as your selector to the CSS file. Cool. Yes. Okay. Now, Carrie, you can give your section a background color. Yeah, keep going. You were feeling it. Keep rolling with it. Go ahead, give yourself a background color. Yes, sky blue forever. Long live sky blue. <laughs> you can give it padding. Padding is the amount of space that's inside of the box, kind of like if I were packing up a, um, a box to ship over to Joe in DC, I put some padding in there to make sure that nothing gets broken. So padding is what's around here. Margin is the personal space bubble of your div. So it's the area between your box and everything else. So let's go ahead and run this and see what Carrie's made. Beautiful Carrie, love, love it. All right, everyone else, go ahead, start adding in your own CSS styles for this section. And this is why it was important that your um, section name was only one word. Okay, so if your section name is multiple page is multiple words like this, you're gonna like potato potato. You're gonna make want to change it so it's just one word. Okay. Ooh, I'm seeing a lot of people working. Love it. If you're having any trouble, go ahead and shout that out into the chat. You need some help and I will jump in and help you out. I can't wait to see what people make. How are we going to collaboratively design this page? Ooh, Jonathan got a new font. Johan, Johan's box is like, stay away, six feet please. See this, Sarah takes lightsaber choreography class. What? That's beyond cool. I have a lot of questions. I'm going to Google that later for sure. All right. And as you all keep coding, I'm going to remind you of a few things, right? So it's so cool to see how you, you learn just by doing and watching, right? Replit is all about that. We're all about just jumping in and doing it because zero setup means you jump in and do it. And what you're doing is you're learning CSS, you're learning HTML if you haven't yet. And what I'm going to do, since I'm able to view your changes live, is I'm going to keep an eye out for some bugs. You can also help each other out, right? So it's looking like everyone seems to have a good sense. Jen, I'm going to say, don't forget your good syntax. So syntax is kind of like um, how every sentence starts with a capital letter and every sentence ends with some punctuation, right? In CSS, our rules all have to end with a semicolon. Nice. Good job. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to run this code again. I want to see what else folks have done. Carrie changed the font color. My cat butter is here. Oh, hello, butter. We've got some colors. Cool. Okay. Love it. So awesome. 
Carrie, great question. Can you do a website for the Congressional App Challenge, Joe? Yeah, you definitely can. Um, we're trying to make the program as uh, open-ended as possible and uh, make sure that as many students can participate as possible. And so as long as you're utilizing code in some capacity, you're eligible to submit it, whether that's a website, a mobile app, um, a program for your smart fridge, anything that utilizes code is eligible to be submitted. Awesome. I know, um, let's see, if you haven't looked yet, there are some great submissions, like past submissions. Um, can I see past winners? If you're looking for inspiration, you can check these out. I love looking at these. Okay, let me run this again. All right. So cool. You all are really fast learners. I wonder if we can get some more fonts in here. Curious about that. I see Jonathan has a different font. Divya does. So cool. Um, while you keep playing with that, I just want to check if there's any questions. Does anyone have any questions about Replit, um, about the Congressional App Challenge while we play with our um, CSS? While you're there, I'll even add some CSS resources. Jonathan asks, how would you modify font color in the CSS file? So let's see, it looks like background color changes the background of it, but what about color color? Try that. This is our, this is called our property color, and this is our value. So in this case, I'm going to use the property color. Go ahead and try that, Jonathan. Trent asks, is there a rubric in which the judges evaluate each app? Yes, yeah, I will I'll, link to that. Joe, go ahead and explain it and I'll pull it up. Yeah, so um, every member of Congress has an opportunity to um, judge their own, create their own rubric for the apps. We do provide a uh, rubric for student apps that members of Congress can use. And we're actually in the process of updating that right now. We're going to be publishing our new one for 2021 here in the next few days. And so um, we've got it just about finalized. We're introducing it to congressional staff tomorrow um, and we'll be updating the website with it within the next few days. So uh, make sure to look out for that. We should have the new one up there very, very soon. Cool. All right, Joe just added that to the Q&A. Thank you. I'm going to hit run on this again just to see your beautiful work. Jonathan, you found out font color. Awesome. Okay. So by all means, keep adding to the chat. Keep playing with this code. I love to see what you're making. Um, and I'm going to move into some other things, upcoming opportunities at Replit and ways for you to get involved and continue developing your coding skills. So again, all these slides are here for you. I go way in deep in depth with the details if you need help. Um, but I wanna tell you about two really big things that are coming up that I hope that you'll participate in with us. The first one is that next week, we will be offering mentor sessions where you'll be able to meet with Replit's engineers. So my amazing colleagues that you see in this picture, there's me, where am I? There's me. Where's Brittany? Brittany's, Brittany, where are you? I think I'm, am I next to you? There you are, Brittany. Or close, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and so you'll be able to meet with people like Ferris, Connor, who else is gonna be there? 
Jeremy, we've got some awesome engineers um, and developers who are going to be helping you out. Um, you'll be able to present your project to them, share your code, and they can give you feedback and help. So if you want to, please register now um, because spots are limited. I'll add this to the chat, but it's also in the slides. Okay. And join us for our mentor dates next week. I really hope you'll come. Um, then we also have a game jam coming up. So for those of you who are really interested in video game development, um, Replit has a homegrown video game development language called Kaboom. Um, it's built on JavaScript. And we'll be doing a game jam October 18th through 25th, where you can make video games, meet people, and collaborate. And we also have a few prizes for you. Now, if you are, if you lose these slides, there's a big banner on our homepage so you can find us again. All right. And you don't necessarily have to build your game with Kaboom, you can build it with any other language. So if you've been working on a video game for the Congressional App Challenge or for class, um, and there's a specific language that you really like to use, build a game with that language. Okay. I think it would be so, so cool to have a little bit of like Congressional App Challenge, Kajam crossover. We'd love to see it. Okay, back to my slides. And lastly, you can find us on Twitter. Um, we often highlight really cool projects that folks have made on Replit. Um, we give people a bunch of shout outs. We love to meet our users, just like we're doing right now. Um, and you can always at us if you have questions or if you need some help with anything at all. Okay, so I see the Q&A and I'm looking through the chat. Naveen, what is your question? Can I send a link to a drawing thing I made? Uh, I don't, yeah, go ahead, Naveen. Look at the Q&A. Aniket, yes, we are recording this and we'll share it out with you afterwards. Carrie, if your students don't know how to make games, can they come to Kajam and learn? Um, I'm not sure. Let me get back to you about that, Carrie. I'm not sure how many learning opportunities they are, but uh, Kaboom has a really great website that you can learn um, how to use it on. This is Naveen. All right, Brittany, do we have any other questions in the Q and A or in the chat that we're not seeing? I think you got them all. Yeah. Awesome. Hey. <laughs> Oh, David, I see you're building a game on Python with turtles. Is that right? So if we don't have any more questions, this is the time where you all get a little bit of behind the scenes look at our features that not everyone gets to use or see. Um, so I'm going to show you some of those right now. Sarah asks, how did you import different fonts? I brought them in from Google Fonts um, because they are free. I'll show you how to do that right now. So up here at the top, this is where I import them. And I'm just going to go to Google Fonts. And I'm going to find whichever one I like the most. There's one that I like called Museo. Yeah, I love the squiggly W. So you'll find the font that you like, Sarah and then pick out which version of it you want, which can be multiple. Just do this one, select the style. Then you're gonna click on this button, at import. From there, 
we're going to copy this at import URL. Don't forget about, or don't worry about those style tags. We don't use those. And you can just import that into your project. Okay. Then it also gives you the prop, the CSS property and the CSS values that you need to use this font. All right, use at import at the top of CSS. So sorry, I just added that in the Q&A for you. Okay, you got it. Divya asks, are we able to publish the apps that we make on Replit to the App Store or the Google Play Store? I am not sure about that, actually. That is a really good question. I've never published anything to the App Store or the Google Play Store. I know there's a little bit of stuff you have to do with um, Android or with Apple to make that happen, but you don't have to worry too much about that. If you build something on Replit, you can publish it to apps and it'll hi be highlighted here, okay? So for example, if I wanted to publish this project that we made together to apps, I could do that. I would go to, pick up in the details and I would hit publish, All right? And then it would appear on apps. Now apps is like a lot of, um, platforms, it's based on popularity. So if you get a lot of clicks, you'll show up on here, but there's all these different tags, right? So for some of you who might be interested in Kaboom, right? I can look at everything tagged with Kaboom JS. Okay, so just make sure that you tag yours so that people can find it. Okay. All right. Tay says, may know where the changes on Replit are not showing. Let's see, Taejun Ying, Yin, are you hitting run? You'll need to make sure you're hitting run first. Okay. If it's not showing, it could also be a bug of some kind that we can definitely debug. So let's see, where is yours? Let's have a look. Here we go. JYT. Oh, I think I found the bug. So your selector is not pointing to the right place. JY is not the name of your of your div class. JYT is. Nice. Let's see if it works now. Looks beautiful. Good work. Yeah, you're super welcome. Don't you worry about it. Okay. So a few more things that I wanna share with you all. Um, the first is um, that we have, let me see, this URL, right? We talked about how important this URL is. You can share this with folks and it'll just be where your site lives. Okay, so this is what I always tell my students to put on their resume is this link right up here. Then the other thing I wanna show you all is that if you're collaborating with someone or if you are doing a demo, oof, just out of focus. Oh, still blurry? Okay, it doesn't matter, you've seen enough of me. Um, you all can observe people. So for example, Sanjay, I can observe Sanjay. And as they move throughout this project, I can watch them move throughout the project or Jen Demers. Jen, why don't you add some changes to the index and then we'll jump files with you. Awesome, so now we're in the index. Cool. Awesome. So I love observation mode because if you're doing pair programming, so for example, if you are working with someone else, you have a driver and a navigator. The driver is the only person who should be coding and the navigator should be like Googling things and looking for bugs and generally helping out with their hands off the keyboard. So if I'm the navigator, all I have to do is click observe 
And then my driver will just drive me through this project, right? The teachers here who are here, Observe is awesome for coding demos, right? Um, or it's also really great if a student's doing a presentation or wants to explain their thinking behind how they're working through some code. It'd be really good for that too. All right, Sky. All right, so for example, let's take a look at Sky's project. Sky. See right here. Aha. So Sky, it looks like you're going to want to change your class names. Go ahead and change your div class name. Start in red. To a unique name. So we talked about the annotations, right, that we tie to code. We can also chat in here. So at the bottom right, you'll see we have our threads button and you can go ahead and say, hey, in here. So it's really, really social. I love this because if you're trying to work with a club after school, you all can work after school and do this, right? You don't have to be in the same room. It's a great place to just hang out. Hey, Miss Murphy CS. <laughs> All right, Sky. All right, so we're calling it Toll. Very nice. So in CSS, in this file, you're going to do dot toll. I think this is yours, right? Yeah. So let's change this to your class name, which is Toll. Johan asks, asks, how did Replit get started? Ooh, a lot of different things came together, but Replit was founded by um, Amjad Masad, um, ha uh, Haya Ode, and Ferris Masad. Um, Haya is Amjad's wife, Ferris is his brother, and they all were super curious about how to make coding more accessible, right? Amjad wanted a way to be able to like code in class, which I don't know if I'm allowed to say that in front of all you teachers, sorry. But um, he wanted a way that he could like have his phone and be coding, you know? And so he wanted to have a way that he could code on a phone, on a tablet, on a computer, et cetera. And so they worked on this together, this completely browser-based, zero setup, super flexible IDE um, that you can code from anywhere. There's a lot more to that story too. You can read about it on our blog. Um, and you can also follow Amjad and Haya on Twitter. Here's our blog, by the way. Um, they always have really great things to say. I really love all of the, all of the thought behind Replit because it creates such a fun and collaborative place like where we've been hanging out in, in this simple project. We've learned a little bit, we've shared, we've debugged, all that. So thanks for asking that, Johan. Okay. Any last questions before we wrap up? Carrie asks, are we in Teams right now? No, Carrie, right now we are just in the Replit core product. Teams would be um, in an education in here. And Teams, you can get it for the teachers, you get a free four month trial of it, but students would need to be in a team to get started. Um, I love the core product for students because it's totally free, they can build. Yeah, students, if you want, you can create a team for friends and you can collaborate with up to 10 of your friends on Replit. You'll have all shared projects in here. Um, but you can also just use the join links and spotlight if you want to share. Too many ways to share possibly. It gets confusing, but just know there are a lot of ways to share. So good question, you guys. I'm gonna put this link again in the chat because 
I really want some of you to register for these mentor sessions. Our engineers are so, so, so excited to meet you all. Please register. I think it'd be awesome to see what you've got in progress. Um, and also just to get to know you all. I talk to teachers all day. I would love to meet some young folks who are working on projects as well. All right. So we only have about three minutes left in the chat. And Joe, is it possible to make the chat visible to everyone? I want to do yeah, it. Yeah, we can do that. I'm here. Sorry, it was taking me a second to get unmuted. Um, let me go ahead and, and just change that. It seems like we've got a really good core group. So I think we can safely go ahead and do that. So let me go ahead and yeah, everyone should now be able to chat with everyone. Cool. So everyone, as our closing in the chat, I want you to add one thing that you are excited to make on Replit or excited to build into your project after our meeting today. OK, so what are you excited to make on Replit or add to your project after our meeting? Great. Go ahead and add those in. Ooh, observation mode. Yes, Jen, I think it's so fun. Video games. Naveen said anything. You know what? Anything's possible. So yes. Games. Add some flair to your projects. Yeah, using CSS. <laughs> Ooh, Sarah, I love that idea. Your own website with some art, an online shop. Yes. Host your business. Love it some Python projects, Anush says. Ooh, Divya, I'm so glad that we could find a solution for that question. Minecraft mods, yes. Keep them coming. I want to see what else you have in mind, everyone. Mm, yep. Lots, oh my goodness, Trent, lots of Python resources. Also, if you use Teams for Education, we have a lot of Python curriculum that you can use too. Ooh, okay, I see some Python fans here. Ooh, Jen, excited to drive in more flowers and pie games. Okay, for those of you who are artists, one last little, uh, I don't even know what to call this. One last cool thing to show you is that you can draw on Replit. Did you know that? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new file and I'm gonna call it, call, I'm gonna call it drawing.draw. So dot draw files allow you to draw shapes, draw lines, you can add letters, you could add circles, all kinds of stuff. And then even better, if I want to put drawing.draw into my project, I can do that too. I'm just going to do an image. And for the source, I'm going to do drawing.draw. And now, in my project, well, it probably won't show up very well. Because it's all white. I can, well, I, I won't do it right now, but I can add these to my projects, which is so awesome, right? You can brainstorm with people, you can do icebreakers, doodles, do it. Ida says, me and my friend have an idea for something we want to make together. I think we're going to use this. Yes, I can't wait. Oh, that's going to be so awesome. So you guys, it is 631. I think I've taken enough of your time, but if you want to stay in touch or you want to share what you've made, please at me. I would love to see it at Lena at Replit. You can see Congressional App Challenge has shared a bunch. Um, you can also always email me at lena at replit.com. Very easy to remember. I am here for you. Um, and I very much hope that you will find us next week and register for our mentor sessions. Um, again, we are so excited to meet you. Do not be afraid of meeting these engineers. They're some of the friendliest, 
awesomest, funniest people I've ever met, and they really want to meet you. So honestly, the honor is theirs. All right. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Joe. Thank yeah. you, um, Jack, who I just met today. We appreciate it. Well, thank you, Lena, so much for the presentation this evening. This was really great. We will send out um, a bunch of resources after this, including where students can register for uh, next week's mentoring session. So hopefully we see many of you there. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll follow up, hoping to see many Replit projects this year for the Congressional App Challenge. Uh, I know it's a really great way for them to, to compete. And so uh, we're so excited about the, the partnership and, and Lena, this was really an incredible and super informative session. So thank you. And thanks Brittany as well for, um, for helping put it on. So thank you all. Thank you, Brittany. So have a great night, everyone. I'm gonna end the meeting right. now. Bye. See you guys. <laughs>